And we are live in the CD92.9 big room uh, here on Saturday per uh, performing before their sold-out show at the a and Music Bar tonight. Or if you're listening on Monday, after their triumphant sold-out show at the a and Music Bar on Saturday night, give it up one more time for the Backseat Lovers. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, could we get started with a song? Of course. Something to change my mood Cause I know that what's in these plastic cups Isn't going to Kids on the lawn Stuck in pairs of two And your lunch is on its way back up But you're still in the pool Wait inside Songs playing too loud But upstairs they're still making out I'm getting all choked up I guess it's just my luck And I'm stuck on the porch What am I waiting I'll be fine. Backseat lovers here in the CD929 big room. Fantastic, folks. Please correct me if I'm wrong. That is a pool house which you can find on their terrific debut LP, When We Were Friends, which is out now. 
Yes, I have to say it's terrific because I'm interviewing them, but like legitimately, it's a great record. You should all check it out if you haven't yet. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> so folks, so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. We might have seen you before. I know your, your first, supposedly first North American tour got canceled last year. Uh, but now, so I guess this is your first North American tour and you got to play at Lollapalooza as part of that. Wow, uh, how does one sign up for that on their first tour? But uh, tell us about that. What was that like playing at Lollapalooza? Um, it was, uh, I don't know, I can't really even put it into words. It was a lot of, uh, you know, I don't know, in the, in the weeks um, c uh, coming up to it, we, were, we just had no idea what to expect. It was a whole lot of not knowing. Um, but just like standing side stage and like getting ready and like feeling that many people collectively screaming is just, I don't know, you can't really put it into words, but it was a really beautiful experience there. Everyone was really kind to us and um, yeah, it was very, very memorable. Good, I'm glad to hear that. And I, of course, I do have to ask, what would you say is a more impressive venue, Grant Park or the CD92.9 Big Room? <laughs> mm. Um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling this one is a very special, very special place. That was such a nice way to say something nice without lying. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. So if, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to go back and kind of talk a little bit about the origins of your band. Uh, my understanding is that you guys sort of started when Josh introduced himself to Juice and said, do you want to form a band? Is that pretty much accurate? Yes. Okay, so Josh, what is it about Juice that, uh, you know, for me, that would be something that I would be really nervous to go up and ask somebody about that, so that must take a lot of courage. What was it about him uh, that made you want to do that in Juice? Why did you say yes? Um, well, it's actually funny. So Ju Juice is f four years older than me, so he was, like, graduated out of high school as I was entering high school. Uh -huh. And through that time, there was, like, this... Um, legend, quote unquote legend, in like the community of music, or musicians in my school, that there was this like older drummer named Juice, and I was like, oh, like, I would love to jam with Juice. Like, I didn't even <laughs> know what he looked like or anything. Like, I just had heard all these rumors. Um, so when I, when I was like getting closer to graduating high school, um, we had some mutual friends at that point, and I just approached him, and it was a little nerve wracking, <laughs> but he said yes. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag he said yes, that's great. Uh, Juice, what was it that, wh why did you say yes? I'm sure if you were such a legend, he wasn't the only person who asked you to join a band. Well, it was kind of funny, because my side of the story was that we had a mutual friend, and he showed me, like, a video of him and their band playing at a uh, venue in Provo in Utah, and I just, I don't know, I just kind of imagined myself up there, not knowing Josh, I didn't even know who he was, and I just really wanted to play on that stage, and then I guess fate took it in its hands, and it was fate, it was fate. <laughs> and that mutual friend kind of introduced us, and I said yes, and we played on that same stage, so. Oh, how cool is that? That's great. Well, then, Josh, you and Jonas, I guess, you met outside of an open mic night that neither of you got on, correct? Yeah. So the first question, did anyone who did make that open mic night play at Lollapalooza? <laughs> I'm not sure. It sounds like you won then. But uh, I, I guess, uh, what, what was it that, uh, you know, that attracted you to each other there when you first met outside there? What, was it something about the songs? Do you remember anything about that? Um, I remember very vividly, I was, um, I was standing in line and he was like right behind me in line. <laughs> and he, had his, he brought his pedal board. And it, at the time, that was like... That, I don't know, it's, it's been a legend, uh, its own legend <laughs> was like how cool it was because he had built his own pedal board. So that was like a huge like talking point. I was like, whoa, dude, like very, very cool. And then as soon as we got to the part of the line where they're like writing your name down to check you in, it was like, sorry, we're full. So oh. we just kind of like played our songs to each other after and ended up jamming with Juice like, like the next week after. That's awesome. And then KJ, I know you're kind of the, the relative newcomer to the band, though you've been there for a while. Uh, what's it like joining up with a bunch of folks who are kind of already playing together? Was that hard or pretty much easy to fit in with these folks? Um, it was pretty easy, <laughs> easy going. I feel like, I mean, pretty much two weeks after I was kind of asked to join the band, I moved in with these other two dudes. So it's been pretty, pretty easy to jump in the mix. Great, that's awesome, that's awesome. So when I look at, uh, at the songwriting credits on your songs, there are a lot of names on there from a lot of you folks. How does that songwriting process work for you? Is it, do you all come up with your own ideas? Do you work it out together, uh, kind of a mixture? Yeah, so I think over the, over the time 
frame of us being a band, it's definitely changed a lot as we've mm -hmm. gotten older. Um, but for the first record, it was kind of the, this process of me having a bunch of songs kind of already written, really just like the guitar arrangement. Um, okay. And then kind of hashing things out with Juice, starting with the drums. And then from there, it was just kind of like bringing it together as a band and all of us collectively making the arrangements together. Um, but for this new record that we've been working on, it's been like way more collaborative from like the ground up. Um, Jonas and I do um, like pretty much all the main like core songwriting, um, uh -huh. just like lyrics, melody, chords kind of thing. Um, and then once that gets to like a point where it's an actual song that's starting to take form, then we'll bring it to the band and it'll be that same kind of process of everybody kind of like throwing paint at it. <laughs> but. Right on. So I, I, was, I definitely did want to talk about the differences between, you know, recording the first and second record, and you've kind of segued nicely into that. Uh, so obviously I know um, from what I've read, you folks really kind of made the best of the not being able to tour situation to really be able to spend the time focusing on the record. How was it different having, you know, so much time to work on it this time around versus, I mean, I guess I don't know how much time you had the first time, but you were still touring and doing other stuff. Yeah. It was way different. I feel like, um, like our first album, we were just kind of like saving up enough money to get into the studio and record like a couple songs, like it's just like a couple days, <laughs> just like whenever we could. And it was kind of like less thought out and like, I don't know, like I feel like it, it's it been a lot different because we've had so much time to work on these songs that we're putting on our next album. And I think it's helped a lot to like just get into like the fine details of it. Right on, I appreciate that. I, I do have some more questions, uh, or I would like to hear a little bit more about that record, but uh, maybe you could do a song before we get into that? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Awesome. Uh, oh, hey, let's give it up one more time for uh, the Backseat Lovers in the CD 92.9 Big Room. Thank you, thank you. Feels a little like a waste of a day I'd like to think it was the right thing to say But it feels a little like I'm not quite ready for all this change Dum -da -da -dum -da 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 -dum. Dum -da -da -dum -da 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 -dum. Lungs are screaming, could you give us a break? Keep on giving and giving and giving and I'll take Today, we 
Wish I had a good excuse to say, but I don't have one. Guess I lost track of time. And it feels a little like it might be the day that I run out of all the right things to say. And it feels a little like I'm not quite ready. Begins to shake. I am tired of waiting for the walls to cave. I haven't cried in a while. I haven't cried in a The Backseat Lovers, live in the CD 92.9 Big Room. That is uh, the latest single, Heavy. Uh, so I do have to ask now, and I understand if you can't tell us, but you've now put out two singles since when we were friends uh, came out, Just a Boy and Heavy. Any chance uh, that those are going to be on album number two? Um, they will not. They will not? They will be standalone. Okay. Can I ask then, are, uh, the, the style of those songs, do you think they're indicative of what we're, we're going to hear on album number two? Or really, wh I guess what I'm saying is, what, what do we have to look forward to here from album number two? I would say it's a, a, fair, a fair like stepping stool. It's not quite revealing enough. I think that there are a lot of changes in the sound for the new record. Um, I think there's just a lot of different mediums that we've been writing with as well. Um, there's a lot more like piano influence songs starting on the piano um, in terms of just like the writing process. Um, but yeah, I would say yeah, a fair stepping stool, but still, still, quite, quite different in okay. some ways. Well, I before everybody came in, I heard one of you playing Martha, my dear, on the piano back there. So okay. I'm very excited to hear the more more piano stuff. That's awesome. Uh, can you tell us when the record's going to drop? Um, I cannot. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know I have to ask though. <laughs> It's my job. I'd tell you if I knew, to be honest. All right, I appreciate it. Well, uh, we're, we're all waiting with bated breath, that's for sure. Uh, so we've talked a bit before about uh, songwriting and you know how you all are songwriters. And uh, I, I, well, I was going to say they're fun questions about songwriting. I wrote them, of course. I think they're fun. Uh, but as songwriters, if you could have uh, a song that you've written be covered by any artist in history, living or dead, wow. what's the song, what's the artist, and why? Wow, that's a great, great question. Um, wow. I'd have to say like John Lennon or something. Like it, nice. I just feel like that would be, I, you couldn't even put that into words, like hearing someone like that sing one of your songs. Oh. Something to think about. Yeah. Um, would, you, uh, would you ever consider writing a song for another artist out there today, or do you pretty much write for your own, for yourself? Uh, I would definitely consider it. I feel like right now in, what, in just like where we're at as a band, like it wouldn't really be something that we'd be like super into just because we're so f dialed in on what it is that we're doing right now. But sure. I do think that that would be fun, especially like if it was like a an artist that we like respected a lot. I think that would be really cool. 
right on. So, uh, you know, the 2020 was hard for all of us, but I can't imagine how hard it is for people like you that get up on stage and perform. I know you did a lot of live streams and stuff like that, but what was it like getting on stage in front of a live audience for the first time in who knows how long uh, after, you know, things started opening up again? What, what was that like, that first show back? Magical. <laughs> <laughs> it really was quite magical. Yeah. Like, it's a little bit of a shock, too. Like, it's, it's like... Yeah, it's just so crazy to go from nothing for so long and then be playing like yeah. almost every day. Because <laughs> I feel, I feel like being because we we played quite often through the pandemic. It was like most days of the week, mm -hmm. and um, in in doing that, it was like never you never heard like another person commenting on what it was you're doing. It was all just us, like very about like the songs, and that's it. There's no like second barrier of like communication between fans like or cheering or anything like that so <clears throat> just the feeling of like walking out on stage and like there being like an eruption of people and remembering that is <sighs> just like very special it, you forget how like important that is to the process it's so cathartic and like important as a musician oh i'm sure well and 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 you brought that up you know not having that feedback with all these new songs you're working on was there anything in particular that you came maybe you debuted a new song and you were just absolutely blown away you got feedback from the audience that you really didn't expect i don't know it's been a very it's been a very gratifying process like playing these new some new songs on our set um in the last in the last couple weeks of this tour um it's definitely it's kind of interesting because there's like a there's kind of a um a pattern of people like singing along for the majority of the set and then w when we play new songs nobody knows the words so it's like just kind of like silence so it's kind of it feels really there's like a really cool reverence that people have been showing which we are very grateful for and like it's cool to just like let let the song like be heard instead of like it being like a collective thing I guess so I don't know I think it's been really special it's been fun to share with with the fans I'm glad to hear that. It says a lot about you guys and your fans that, you know, I think a lot of times, oh, the new music, that's time to go to the bathroom. Clearly not the case with you folks. I think that's great. Uh, so definitely want to hear another song, but I wonder if we could just do a real quick this or that rapid fire here before, before we do that. Uh, Beatles or Stones? Beatles. 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 Sure. He said John Lennon, so I assumed. Uh, dogs or cats? Mm, dogs cats. for me. Cats. cats. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. I, I can't decide. I like them both. Respect. Uh, M&Ms or Skittles? Skittles. Ooh, Skittles, yeah, Skittles. Okay, Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy? Mm, Jeopardy. Jeopardy, Jeopardy recently, yeah. yeah. Okay, chocolate or peanut butter? Chocolate. chocolate. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Um, no. No. <laughs> okay, and is cheesecake pie or cake? Um, cheesecake is the best. Uh. <laughs> you know what, that's a good enough answer. I'm set with that. It is the best. Yeah, that works. Uh, could you play us another song, folks? Yes. Yeah. Appreciate you. Hey, let's give it up for the backseat lovers in the CD929 big room. Thank you, guys. You ready? on the wall I still have the nightmares where I would have to call you to calm down I still think about you all the time When I step out of the shower I'm reminded of the night when we slept in the back of your car and you left me with a pretty cool scar I 
did it hurt when I kicked you to the curb? Now I am all alone. Guess I'll never learn. Purple sweater sitting in my room. I tried to wear it, but I knew that it would smell like you. I saw you dancing at the show tonight. I stood in the back, and I think that we both. Did it hurt when I kicked you to the curb? Now I am all alone. I guess I'll never learn. And I lied when I took you on a drive, and I said I'd never speak to her. Great job, guys. Backseat Lovers live in the CD 92.9 Big Room. They played a triumphant sold-out show at the a and Music Bar on Saturday night. The full-length When We Were Friends is out now along with the singles Just a Boy and Heavy. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Let's give it up one more time for the Backseat Lovers. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. See you around. And let's send it back downstairs to Command Central. <laughs>